it turns out that the divergence theorem has analogs in any number of dimensions. And I'd now like to show you the two-dimensional version. So let's suppose we have a region R in the plane with boundary curve C positively oriented, just like in the statement of Green's theorem. And suppose we have a vector field F, which is PQ, and which is defined in all of R. And let's also assume that it's differentiable so that I can write down its divergence, which is Px plus Qy. And then the theorem is that the double integral over R of the divergence of F with respect to area is the integral over C. So it's not going to be F dot dr. It's something a little bit different. It's going to be, I write it as F dot n ds, where n is an outward unit normal vector to C. So n looks like this. Okay, so now in the integral of f dot dr, you are measuring how much the vector field is pointing in the same direction as the curve. In this integral, you're doing something else. You're measuring how much the vector field is perpendicular to the curve and pointing outward. So you can prove this similarly to the proof of the three-dimensional case, but you can also derive it from Green's theorem. And I'd like to show you how that works because that will help compare this to Green's theorem. So the proof, so let's parameterize C as x of t, y of t, where t goes from, say, alpha to beta. Okay, now I need to calculate the normal vector. So while we're moving along the curve here, the tangent vector to the curve, or the velocity vector, I should say, for this parameterization is the vector x prime of t comma y prime of t. Now, I can make a vector which is perpendicular to this as the vector, uh, so I'm going to take the vector y prime of t comma minus x prime of t. So that vector is perpendicular to the other one because you can just see immediately that the dot product is zero. It's going to cancel out. And also, you can check that this is pointing in the correct direction. So if the, if the um, curve is oriented like this, then this will be pointing out of the region. So the region R is over here. And you can check that just by noting that the cross product, or I should, should say more precisely the determinant, where you put this vector first and that vector second is positive. Okay, so then the integral over c of f dot n ds, so this is the integral with respect to arc length, is what? So it's the integral from alpha to beta of pq dot n. Now what's n? I haven't told you that yet. Because n is supposed to be a normal vector, a unit normal vector. And uh, this vector is not a unit vector, so I have to divide by its length to get n. So n will be the vector y prime comma minus x prime divided by the square root of x prime squared plus y prime squared. Okay, so when I take this dot product, I have y prime of t comma minus x prime of t divided by the square root of x prime of t squared plus y prime of t squared dt. Oh, but it's not dt, it's ds. So ds is the square root of x prime squared plus y prime squared dt. So this is the square root of x prime of t squared 
plus y prime of t squared dt. Okay, so this whole thing here is ds. But now I can cancel out these two ugly square roots. And what I get is the integral from alpha to beta of py prime minus qx prime dt. And remembering that x prime dt is dx and y prime dt is dy, I can rewrite this. I'll do it on the next page. So this is the integral over c of what? So what did we have? We had uh, a py prime dt turned into a p dy, and the other part was q dx. Okay, so now we can use Green's theorem to write this as a double integral over r. Okay, now this is confusing because in Green's theorem, p was the thing next to x and q was the thing next to y. So we have to translate the formula. So, right, so you're supposed to first take the derivative of the thing of the coefficient of y with respect to x. So we get px here. And then you're supposed to take minus the derivative of the coefficient of x with respect to y. So I have minus, minus qy. Right, so that's what Green's theorem tells us. It's a little confusing. It's like when you ask high school students to solve a quadratic equation that looks like bx squared plus cx plus a equals zero. It's very confusing because you re memorize the formula with these letters in different places. Okay, anyway, now we're done because look, this is the divergence. So the divergence of pq. Right? So let's compare this to what happened in Green's theorem. So in Green's theorem, you look at the integral over c of f dot dr. And this is the integral over c of p dx plus q dy. So this measures the extent to which f is um, pointing in the same direction as the curve c. While the integral that we just did that comes up in the divergence theorem is the integral over c of f dot the normal vector, unit normal vector, with respect to arc length. And we saw that this is the integral over c of p dy minus q dx. Um, and then if you do Green's theorem, so the usual Green's theorem, sorry, this is the integral over r, so you get qx minus py dA, which is sort of like the curl. Well, here we get the divergence. Okay, so this two-dimensional version of the divergence theorem is also quite useful.